let's assume you have the text that's on the screen right now. You know that it's in English and you also know that it's a simple substitution cipher. So how do you figure out what it means? The ciphertext is in the description below in case you want to try it out yourself first. What we will be doing in this video is we will be trying to break this cipher. If you are unfamiliar with simple substitution ciphers, I would recommend looking at the video on simple substitution cipher first. It will be linked below. But if you are familiar with it already, then let's break this cipher. So breaking means we are not starting with the key i.e. we don't know which letter maps to which and we have no way of you know guessing it. So there are several ways to go about this. One of the easiest is to start with statistics i.e. count the number of times a particular letter appears in the text. This works because if you can remember with simple substitution ciphers every letter maps to one other letter. So that is what we're basing this uh, method of breaking the cipher on. So the statistics information can be found on Wikipedia. Just go to the article on letter frequency, which is also linked below. It shows you the relative frequency of the letters in English. You will see that there are two sets of statistics for texts and for dictionaries. We need to look at text because we are trying to decipher a paragraph. So if you look at the table, what you will see right away is that the letter with the highest frequency is E, which accounts for 13% of texts. That means if you take a paragraph, 13% of the letters in that will be E. The next highest are A and T, which accounts for 8.2% and 9.1% of the text, respectively. So what you have to remember is these are averages. So it's not going to apply to every single paragraph, but uh, this is the general distribution. In order to apply this information, we can take our ciphertext and put it into a frequency counter. You can find several of these online, or you can just make your own. Or you can count it yourself on you know, using a paper and pen, but that might not be practical for very long paragraphs. But for something like that, it's perfectly all right too. What you can see on the screen right now are the frequencies that I got for the ciphertext shown here. So when you look at this table, the first thing you probably notice is that uh, N has the highest frequency. There's 44 occurrences. So you can pretty safely assume that uh, E is represented by N in your cipher. So let's just replace every occurrence of N with E as I've done here. So what I did was I just used a case sensitive search and replace which you can do with any good word processor. So when you look at the paragraph now you may notice a triplet that's capital B, capital O and E. It appears four times in the short text so it could be the which is a very common three-letter word. In order to confirm that, we can look at our letter frequencies. And as expected, B has a frequency of 38, which is the second most numerous letter, which is consistent with what we know of uh, letter frequencies in English. So we can safely assume that B is equal to T, and therefore the triplet B O E translates to the. So let's replace B with T and O with H. So the resulting paragraph is on the screen right now. And when you look at that, you may have noticed uh, TH, capital P, T, which looks a lot like the word that. And you may also notice that P appears by itself quite a lot. There are only two letters that do that mostly, A and I. And P also has a frequency of 28, which is quite high. So P equals A and looks like a good assumption. So doing that replacement gives us this. So once that is done, the only other standalone letter that appears frequently in English is I. And the only other standalone letter in the cipher is G. The frequency is 23, which is good enough to proceed. So we can do that replacement. Another interesting observation is T, as in simple T, capital E, which can only be the word 2. The frequency for E is 23, which is also consistent with what we know of the frequency of O in a paragraph. So let's just replace G with I and E with O. So with those replacements done, you can see that T looks pretty consistent with S as you have T O, capital T simple O, capital T and double E and the frequency of 20. You may also notice quite a few words that begin with it and this is one of the most uh, common start letters in the English language. So let's go ahead and replace it and at this point, you may have noticed it's mostly an art. Just, you know, find the weak points and attack those. 
and uh, with those replacements done uh, this is the result now let's take another look at the frequencies table so you know there are two other high frequency letters in the english language n and r and uh, they haven't been accounted for yet and as you can see m has a frequency of 20 and uh, a m e looks like a tail so we can assume it's r so let's do the replacement and if you're wrong we can always go back once that is done you can see if you can spot any probable words and start replacing letters so you can see the word letters basically with a capital v so v could be l d could be f because you have o d and d o r f looks like it could be p and u could be n so let's just make those replacements and see if it makes sense so now just look for tells with the replacement done you can see that s can be replaced with g w with u and y with c and h with d and x with w these are all based from you know common words that you can identify from the text and then from observation you can also get z is equal to x a is equal to b j is equal to y k is equal to j i is equal to m and r is equal to b that is almost everything in the cipher so replace those again we're using words that appear quite obvious and this is the result and here there's only one letter that's not you know deciphered and that is q and it's quite obvious that it's k by this point so just do the replacement and you have your deciphered message the thing to keep in mind here is that this method works provided your message is long enough for it to work Another potential reason it may not work is if you're writing a paragraph without, say, the letter E in it. In that case, you could confuse someone trying to decode it a little. And if your message is not in English, you need to find the frequency tables for the language you're working with. It works fairly well for pretty much any alphabet-based language. And to add to that, if you know you're working with a CESA cipher, so in this case, we are dealing with a simple substitution cipher, but if you're working with a CESA cipher, the first letter you definitively break will give you the key right away for the rest of the letters, basically because it just uses a shift. Your alphabet is rotated in a CESA cipher. So in that case, you just need to be sure that you decoded one letter correctly and uh, you can use that to calculate the shift and you've basically broken the entire cipher. But if you can't find anything definitive, you can just use the general method that we discussed here. So go ahead and try this and let me know how it goes. I will link another ciphered paragraph that you can attempt on your own. And I will post the answer to that next week. So that's it for now and see you next time.